Hello everyone. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about methyls and thenes, which are being used for the treatment of asthma. So what is the source of methyls and thenes? We can get methyls and thenes from tea, that is theophylline is obtained from tea and another source is coffee from which we get caffeine and another source is coca from which we get theobromine all of these agents are actually good bronchodilator and as we know in asthma there is bronchoconstriction going on so for that purpose these agents can be useful so what is the mechanism for these agents as we know when there is activation of beta 2 receptor if this is the beta 2 receptor on the bronchial smooth muscle cell when this a receptor is being activated what actually happened that there is a activation of GS coupled protein which then ultimately cause the activation of adenyl cyclase and which then convert ATP into cyclic AMP and this cyclic AMP is involved in many functions such as it is involved in decreasing release of uh, inflammatory mediators it is also involved in decreasing bronchial secretion which is also being increased in asthma and number third is it causes the relaxation of the smooth muscle cell in this way there will be bronchodilation so all of these are required in asthma so what these uh, methyls and thenes do is that they cause the inhibition of the enzyme which is present for the degradation of this cyclic AMP like there is an, an enzyme called as PDE that is phosphodiesterase this enzyme is present for the degradation of cyclic AMP so what actually happened that this enzyme is being inhibited by the methyls and thenes so what happened this uh, phosphodiesterase enzyme is being inhibited by methyl uh, and ultimately there is being increased level of cyclic AMP and then this uh, cyclic AMP cause all of these factors so in this way it will uh, ultimately help us in treating asthma so this is how uh, methyl xanthine work that they inhibit phosphodiesterase enzyme which is required for the degradation of cyclic AMP if we talk about the pharmacodynamics of methyl xanthine so methyl xanthine can cause CNS effects such as nervousness insomnia convulsions and death and if we talk about GI tract uh, stimulation, there is stimulation of secretions of both gastric acid and digestive enzyme. So there is stimulation of acid, that is gastric acid and digestive enzymes. So number third is that on kidney, Methylxanthine have weak diuretic effect. If you have ever observed, there is an increase in the urination after you take tea or coffee. So, if we talk about smooth muscle cell, which is 
our concern over here in asthma so in a smooth muscle cell there is cause of bronchodilation which we require in asthma and on skeleton muscle there is improvement in contractility all of these are pharmacodynamics of methylxanthines. Now, if we should talk about the methylxanthine clinical uses, so these drugs actually have very narrow therapeutic index. So, these agents should only be used where methods to measure uh, theophylline blood level are available. Clearance is being decreased in liver disease because as we know every drug needs renal or uh, liver function for its excretion or elimination. So next is when a smoker is taking these agents what actually happened there is increased clearance why this happened because smoker has induced hepatic enzymes because smoking actually induced the enzymes which are present for the elimination or cleanliness or metabolism for the drugs um, now we talk about chronic asthma so in chronic asthma oral uh, theophylline can be used to control mild to moderate asthma Only oral theophylline is used for this purpose and etophylline along with 80% theophylline is also available in market in IM that is intramuscular injection form. And now if we talk about acute severe asthma over here this state is also called as status asthmaticus it is an emergency condition of asthmatic patient in this condition intravenous Aminophylline is tried when sympathomimetic, which is another important type of bronchodilator, which we have talked in our previous video. When those agents fail to relieve bronchospasm, in those conditions, we try intravenous aminophylline. But remember that these agents are found to be less effective than that of sympathomimetic drugs okay so this was all about methylxanthine and their use in asthma so these are not actually directly increasing the level of uh, cyclic amp but they are actually uh, inhibiting the enzyme which is responsible for degradation of cyclic AMP and ultimately there will be result in increased level of cyclic AMP which then cause the relaxation of bronchial smooth muscles and decrease in bronchial secretion that is mucus and decrease in inflammatory mediator which is also again responsible for uh, bronchoconstriction so when these all these happen there is relief from the asthmatic uh, condition if you have any question let me know in the comment section below
thank you for watching my videos